Hello, my name is Johan Falk. I work at Node Run Scandinavia. It is still a fine morning in Stockholm. The sun is shining and it's uh, awesome in the air. The leaves are falling and stuff. Uh, this is part 7 of Learn Organic Groups, a screencast series from the Node 1 Learning Library you find at node1.se and this tab up here. If you like uh, site building and want to have it all collected in one place, you can come to our library, but you can also buy our book at Amazon. It contain, Well, the book contains the essentials, as the title says, about Drupal 7, starting from scratch and going, to, you know, going through some quite advanced site building stuff. Uh, uh, at the last in the last chapters uh, buy it get it for your clients get it for your project managers get it for your themers get it for your new developers get it for uh, your grandma or something I don't know uh, so this is the sandbox site we're working with in the last three screencasts we have been looking at three different ways of listing organic group content on the group pages um, something like this was the last approach where we used page manager um, I will in this screencast show you how to use page manager to list group content in a more dynamic or more flexible way than we have seen so far and page manager is the only module of the three approaches we've seen that can do this uh, page manager is is one of my favorite modules is it's really a good way of managing contextual information on your site to, to make your site do what you want um, yeah, okay, so what I will do in this screencast is uh, make, well, set up a, a custom page with Page Manager so that I, uh, when I view an article that belongs to a group, uh, I get the article here on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I get more content from the same group. It is theoretically possible to do that with Eva, I think, depends on how the tokens work with it. Uh, it is theoretically possible to do that with views only if you uh, hack some um, uh, default values for contextual filters, which is kind of a bad habit. Uh, and you can do it in a very clean and nice way if you use views, content panes and page manager together. So, uh, um, just as with uh, the, the group page here and the list we have here, I'm going to use the same uh, view content pane. Uh, to embed it and we're we actually have 90% of what we need right now but before proceeding I need to make a change to the view that we uh, built in the last screencast. I made a little bit of a mistake on the argument input here uh, I'm saying to views or to, to uh, page manager actually that I need a node for this argument and I'm collecting the content ID what I really should be saying is that I need an organic group and I'm going to collect the entity ID from it because it's not certain that we have um, uh, that we have a node that is the group. So I'm going to apply this and save. Let's make sure that this still works. It doesn't, okay, because this um, this content pane now needs to be reconfigured. Uh, let's, uh, let's actually skip that for now. Let's actually skip that for now. And I'm closing this one. Alright, so uh, now we have 90% of what we need. Um, we have here, let's go back one step to the custom pages on the site. Uh, we have enabled the node slash node uh, page used for displaying nodes. We have one variant only used when displaying uh, OG groups. Uh, I'm gonna add a new variant that I will use when uh, viewing OG content. So let's call that OG content. I'm gonna use a panel, I'm gonna use selection rules and I'm also gonna use context but I'll come back to that to make this hopefully a bit more clear to you what's happening. First of all I set up the selection rules saying that the node being viewed should be an OG group content add this criteria, the node being viewed should be OG content, good. That means that this variant will be used for articles for example because they are OG content. Um, uh, selecting a layout here, this is panel stuff, I'm not very good at panels uh, or at layout and, and CSS stuff as you might have concluded already, I might have mentioned it. Right, here's the actual content. On the left hand side I'm gonna add the 
the node content as I did in the previous screencast. Let's call it node content here. Avoid duplication of title and click, 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 click. This is not really the important part. Let's have a look at this now. Create variant, update and save. Oh, I love these uh, multiple update and save buttons. All right, if I reload this another article, I get the article content on the left hand side and the right hand side here is not, uh, uh, doesn't have any content right now. Now, you could think that I can add content and just go in and add this group uh, content pane thing. But it's not even showing here because Page Manager knows that I cannot add it. I don't have any group ID to send to it. And this is where contexts come in. From the context configuration in the, in the custom page, I can add new data to this custom page, make Page Manager and CTools aware of more data. So right now I have a node, which is kind of useful, but I'm going to collect the group from this node. Uh, to make that available to, to uh, page manager as well. Uh, from the node, I'm collecting this uh, group. I'm going to call it group, group, cool, finish. Update and save. You need to update and save to, for this to have effect. Now you can, see, you can see we have this node being viewed here. It has all of these properties we can play with if we want to. And then we have the group with these properties. For example, this group entity ID which is the thing that will go into views in a short minute. Switching back to content, I can now on the right hand side add content. We have now group panes available here. I can select the content pane, view content pane, and it asks what, can, what uh, piece of content, what, what contextual information do you want to send for the contextual filter? Well, I'm going to use the group. Uh, and I'm going to call this more stuff from this from this group. I can use replacement patterns here. Let's actually try that from group title. I'm not sure that this is a valid replacement pattern, but let's try it. Finish, update and save. Okay, now when viewing another article, yeah, okay, more stuff from and I didn't get it. Uh, but the list is here, another article, and this is an article. Cool. Uh, let's see if I can make this uh, title uh, appear in a good way as well. Going back to context, well, actually, I don't have to do that. Uh, there's a substitution list here that is pretty long. Group label, I guess I should use. No. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's edit this settings here from group label finish. And then I'm going to give you a, a neat last trick to fix this and to make it even more neat. More stuff from from my special group. We have have this. Now this uh, last trick I want to show you is uh, how to exclude the currently viewed article uh, because that's probably you, you don't want to have this duplicated and going into the view you can add another contextual filter here for excluding a selected piece of content so I'm adding here a contextual filter on node ID add and I'm gonna well, specify a validation criteria make sure this is a node uh, content cool uh, and I'm gonna select, where do we have that? Is that in the more? Yeah, exclude here. Saying that instead of matching against this node idea, fetching only that node, we're excluding it. So we're fetching it, uh, fetching everything that is not this node. Apply. And the argument input then for pane settings, uh, I edit and the content nib source should be from context as well. I'm uh, requiring a node object and we're going to collect the node ID and I'm also going to select that this is optional so we can use this view content pane even if we don't want to exclude a particular node which makes sense and this save 
going back to the node template, editing this content pane and saying this content nid that I want to exclude, let's exclude the node being viewed. Finish. Update and save. And voila! We have an article here but not another article. Cool! So we have seen uh, three different ways of embedding or creating lists of uh, content in organic groups. Uh, as mentioned, I, I definitely prefer the page manager way. I think the organic groups creator also prefers that. He's a cool guy and he, he made this possible with uh, uh, page manager. So, so I would say that this is the, the path he recommends as well. Of course, you're free to choose whatever you like. The, the strengths of using page manager for this, I think, is that you have much more flexibility and you can reuse your configuration much, much more, which is, of course, something good. Uh, don't repeat yourself, as the old Greeks used to say. Um, yeah, all right, so that's it. In the upcoming uh, chapter about organic groups, we're going to look at uh, access in organic groups, which is usually why you use organic groups, because you want to restrict access to uh, well, restrict the access to just the group members or something like that. Yeah, see you there. I hope you had fun. If, if you find this uh, page manager uh, stuff confusing, head over to the uh, learning library and look for the page manager screencast series. It's, uh, it's I think, my favorite one. That or rules, I guess. See you. Bye.